if you don't make an intentional action, so this is where it gets tricky about comfort and, and actually having to make some effort. Like in, in Buddhism, there's this idea, which I think we could connect to Feldenkrais about like, you know, no effort, no effort doesn't mean you're like a blob on the floor. No effort means correct amount of effort. Sometimes things change first on the level of language, you know, just in language in, in the world, we, we kind of started to say like people of color, then we, then we realized, well, black and indigenous people bear a specific kind of brunt of, of racism and oppression. So we're gonna separate that out. So then it started to be black indigenous and other people of color. Now we're, the, the way, you know, this sounding like we're a marginalized, we're minority global majority. Now we're going to say global majority. So you see how the language, we're, we're trying to kind of change people's thought and like even the land acknowledgement. So the idea of acknowledging I'm on Tongva land, like this action may seem to people very small, but it, it's a way of, of, of highlighting a contradiction. Um, that is that we are all settlers, most of us on, on, on land that is, that is not ours. And what is our responsibility? What is the correct action what is the correct effort to correct that? You know, we were talking about the kind of pervasiveness of, of, of whiteness or white culture. And I, I feel like as a light-skinned East Asian person in the culture, if I don't, if I'm not intentional about, if I'm not intentional about educating myself and politicizing myself, the culture will just try to pull me to towards whiteness. Um, and but I know that I've not of European heritage. I'm not, you know, I, I may enjoy certain privileges, uh, but I, I think that partly I started down this path because I was trying to teach classes about race and theater. And I realized, oh, this conversation is emotional. And a lot of times uh, it, it gets to a point where I, I feel like there's, like you said, uh, you know, there's potential to go somewhere else, but I'm not sure I have the tools to take it there. And so I started going to drama therapy workshops and that's how I got into playback theater. And then fortunately or unfortunately, um, just trying to be a, a woman of color in academia and um, needing to explain my position sometimes kind of forced me <laughs> into, and this is kind of happens to people of color too. So sometimes it's like, oh, is it a, blessing or a curse, you know, you know, that I, I kind of had to, going back to the warrior thing, <laughs> I had to arm myself with these tools in order to explain myself or in order to make my presence here legitimate and to be able to explain the struggles of my, my colleagues or of students um, who, who are having a hard time with um, kind of the white supremacy in the academy. Mm -hmm. 